Psychologists who did research about the topic of superheroes explain there is a big difference in the movie superhero of today and the comic book superhero of yesterday. Today's superhero is too much like an action hero who participates in nonstop violence. He's aggressive, sarcastic, and really speaks to the virtue of doing good for humanity. When not in superhero costume, these men like Iron Man exploit women, flaunt bling, and convey their manhood with high-powered guns. The world tries to show that superheroes are role models. But here are just a few negatives. Superheroes put children at risk at times. Distorts reality. Tough guy complex. Violent behavior and aggression. Preschoolers are into superheroes and so many parents think that a superhero culture will help their kids defend others and be nicer to their peers. But studies show the opposite. Kids pick up aggressive themes. Adults still believe in superheroes. They say it makes the world a better place and watching a movie will always manage to cheer them up. It gives you a way to escape the woes of reality and offer and offer a safe haven. But this is not real life. Adults feel it gives courage to face daily struggles, even though we are well aware that they are fictional. Everywhere you turn, there are action heroes, movies, games, books, websites, and more. Matter of fact, the state of New York runs superhero conventions from New York City right up into Buffalo. Uh, but it's not, again, it's the, what we do with it. For some people who are really into it and believe in it, it's not real life. Uh, it's a fantasy world that, that people live in. But what I'd like to do tonight is to bring you back to real life and back to the one who can make your next chapter your best chapter. So how can it be that God so loved the most unlovable part of us? He gave his son's life, the only gift we'll ever need to be free, we'll have eternal life. It's amazing with God and Jesus Christ that the victory is ours. Everything is working for our good always. Jesus Christ saved the day. He came through. He didn't walk away from his calling. It's not what a true hero would, superhero would do. There's no greater love from God and his son, Jesus Christ. How can it be that every one of our sins have been washed away? And God's patience with you will never leave. It's Christ's eyes behind your eyes that help you spiritually to see, no matter what you go through. God is always working in the background for your good through his son, Jesus Christ. And how thankful we are about to have that. Jesus Christ saved the day. He came through. When he was hanging on the cross, he didn't say no. He said he would do it, right? Imagine if he said no, but he's the real superhero. And tonight, the title of my teaching is The Real Superhero, Jesus Christ, Our Savior. So you can turn to Colossians chapter 1. Christians have been robbed of their believing because of sin consciousness. Have any of you, and you don't have to, this is a rhetorical question, have any of you had sin consciousness in your life or condemnation? There are times that you might not have felt worthy. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I grew up in the church. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, catechism, Sunday school, Monday night novenas with my grandmother lighting candles. But I was never taught about our sonship or the righteousness of God in Christ, in Christ Jesus. I was not taught that I was more than a sukkah conqueror through him who loved us, for the one who died for us. You and I have been made complete in Christ. We are seated in the heavenlies. Not later, not in a little while, now we're seated in the heavenlies. We were never taught what our real superhero accomplished for us. I went through so many years of being in the church and no one, no one ever taught me about what Jesus Christ did for my life and how he saved me. That I was a dead man. I was a man of 
body and soul, but God loved the unlovable that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ loved us so much that he did his father's will and he did not quit. <laughs> We've been made complete in Christ. We are seated in the heavenlies now. We were never taught what a real superhero accomplished for us. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us? Translated is, uh, is to move to, or to transfer to another place. So we went from being old and corrupt to this new, new person once we got born again. It says, He hath made us meet to be part, uh, verse 12, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us unto the kingdom by his dear Son. So by the work of what Jesus Christ did, we've been transferred to the kingdom, God's kingdom. We are in Christ. He delivered us from the power of darkness. God in Christ has delivered us from darkness. We have citizenship in his kingdom by what Jesus Christ did. Christ had to die two deaths. He had to die spiritually and physically for us to be redeemed. He, he hung on the cross and he died spiritually for our sins. And he died physically, his soul life. And in order to redeem man, he had to do it in every category. All natural men are dead in trespasses and sins without God and without hope because they are spiritually dead. And Jesus Christ died spiritually on the cross. He took our sin upon him. Who knew no sin? Think about this. Let's say you're in class and you get 100 on your test, but the teacher tells you you have to stay after school to learn more. I mean, you were right. You did everything right. You studied. You got 100% on the test. Jesus Christ was without, without sin, and he had to take on our sin. That's amazing. He didn't have to do that. But he did. Why? Because he loved God and he loved us. It's amazing. Anyway, he had to die two deaths, so he knew no sin. And he gave his soul life. He's the healer. Spiritually, we needed a new birth. Eternal life is the greatest healing. Christ is the superhero and our Savior. Look in Romans chapter 3. I'm so thankful that somebody witnessed the word to me and brought me to a fellowship just like this so that I could hear God's word, that I could learn about Jesus Christ, you know, that I am righteous, that I've been justified. I spent all those years, 20 some odd years, going to church all the time and was never taught any of those things. In Romans 3, verse 20, it says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Verse 21, But now, doesn't say later, it says, Now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. We have the righteousness of God manifested. It was made clear. It was made apparent. It's no longer hidden. Verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is the faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that do what? Believe. Believe. For it is, there is no difference. It's for whoever who believes, the spiritual man can take this in and manifest the truth. Somebody witnessed to me and I got, had the opportunity to make a decision for myself. Somebody was knocking at the door and I decided to open it and I got to learn God's word, rightly divided. You know, now here some over 40 years later and to think about that I have the righteousness of God that I've been justified is amazing. What Jesus Christ did for all the born again believers, righteousness is given unto all and upon all who believe. When you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you got the righteousness of God. Christ in you, the hope of glory. <laughs> Why should we live below par every day? Why should we have negatives or fear or worries or frustrations? 
of all of us have you experienced those things before doesn't mean they go away it just means that you have God and Christ in you and you don't have to live that way does the old man try to make you live that way absolutely because of the work of our superhero our savior we are righteous look in verse 22 even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference man woman president white black green yellow turquoise it does not matter there's no difference verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God every one of us have sinned but we receive Jesus Christ we heard in the teaching at the area meeting about who has the power of death the devil right but how do we get born again of God's spirit somebody Pat was talking about a, uh, a minister who shared this prayer and that nowhere in it, but it's Romans 10, 9 and 10, right? If you believe in your heart of Jesus Christ, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be what? Saved. saved. Case closed. It says you're going to be saved. You know, don't take it up with me. You got to take it up with God. That's what he says. You are righteous. We can end the teaching right here. It's our believing in Christ. Verse 24, being justified freely in his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 25, whom God hath set forth to be propitiation, the payment through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. <laughs> it's a free gift. It's free. Confess Romans 10, 9, and 10. You have eternal life. It's free. Why? Because God paid. He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and our Savior, our superhero, He hung on the cross for you and for me, and He didn't get down. He could have got down and, and walked away, but He didn't because He's so loved too. Look in Romans chapter 4, verse 25. It says, who was delivered for our offenses, for our sins, and was raised again for our justification. <laughs> Your sins were washed away. They were blotted out. You don't have to think about them. It takes believing. Don't believe what the world says. Believe what the word says. He was raised for our justification, delivered for our sins, and God raised him. God didn't leave him hanging. Second Corinthians. All right, I take it back. Stay in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. We can read verse 1 because of what happened in verse 25. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Being justified by believing by the faith of Jesus Christ, we have peace. Now, do we have to renew our minds? We heard that in the, in the teaching the other day. The key to power is a renewed mind, right? You still have to renew your mind to the word. It's not like a pill that you swallow and it automatically, you know, you have to renew your mind to the word. You can't receive righteousness if God didn't justify you. Death and resurrection of Christ, when he raised him, we were justified. You get peace. That peace is undisturbed, untroubled well-being, no strife. How's that sound? Sound like a good deal? having that kind of peace in our life. You get peace by receiving Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature, a new creation. <laughs> it says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What are some of the old things? Fear, worry, anxiety. All the negatives that have built up are passed away. That's what a real superhero does. That's what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did for us. Verse 18, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ 
and hath given us to given to us the ministry of reconciliation. <laughs> Once you're justified too, you've been reconciled. And that word reconciled is you it was a disconnect, now you're connected again. And you're connected back to the one who can make your next chapter of your life your best chapter. You don't have to worry about your past. There are believers that are still worrying about their past. You don't have to. It's like right here it starts. Go forward. The past is the past. It's over. You don't have to worry. We just renew our minds to the word. Look in Romans chapter 8. Verse 1 says, there is therefore, what's that word? Now. now. It says now there's no condemnation. I don't know. The word of God says it, right? The word says it, I believe it. It's written. It's going to be there tomorrow. If I, if I stop teaching now and you never see me again and you go back to Romans 8, chapter, verse 1, it's going to say there is therefore now no condemnation. There's no condemnation. To them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. <laughs> no condemnation spiritually. Are there believers who are still condemning themselves? Yes. We have to renew our mind to what the word of God says. The word of God says, there is therefore now no condemnation. We have to believe the word. It's about renewed mind, which is the key to power. So don't walk in the flesh. Look in verse 17. It says, And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ. If so, be that ye suffer with him, that you may, we may be also glorified together. You and I are joint heirs with Christ. We share fully with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Look in verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession with groanings which cannot be uttered. This is the Christ in you, God's power in you, making intercession. When is it making intercession? Right now. Right now as I speak to you, Jesus Christ is making intercession. It isn't Antilly who's up in heaven. It's the Lord Jesus Christ making intercession for you and for me. I mean, he's the number one guy after God. If you have to have somebody, if you wanted somebody to be making intercession for you, who would you want it to be? Jesus. Amen to that. Verse 27, And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according in harmony with God. <laughs> intercession for the saints. As I said, it's not Aunt Tilly. It's Jesus Christ. Verse 28, and we know that all things, not a few things, but all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his good purpose, to God's will, to them who are called. God called you and you responded. You're in this room tonight because God called you and you responded. You said yes. You could have said no. The person that witnessed to me, first time he did, I said no. You know, then uh, the second time he had someone else come witness to me and, <laughs> and I said no. And then he came back a second time, it was, happened to be Sheila's brother. And I said yes. And I went to a fellowship back when I was, I don't know, 1975. Whew, you guys weren't even born. But I went to a fellowship. <laughs> Pat was born. God called and I responded. Verse 29. For whom did he foreknow, he also did predestinate, he foreordained, to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Verse 30. Oh, I just read that. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 
What a one-two punch. God and His Son, Jesus Christ, and it's God in Christ in you, the hope of glory. There's no better one-two punch than that. Batman and Robin don't cut it compared to that. You know, Superman and Lois Lane or Jimmy Olsen, they don't cut it compared to that. To them who are called, God called and you responded. Verse 37, it says, nay. Oh, wait a minute, let's back up. Who shall separate us? Verse 35, the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. It says, no, nay. In all these things, we are more than what? Conquerors. conquerors. And that's super conquerors. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. <laughs> In all these things, we are conquerors. Super. It's bigger than any action hero. <laughs> Nick, let me ask you a question. If God gave you revelation, could you lay hands on somebody, pray for them, and minister to them? God in Christ in him, he's more than a conqueror. He can do all things through Christ who strengthens him. Verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is the real superhero. He's our savior. He's our big brother. In Genesis chapter 3, you don't have to turn there. You can go to Revelations chapter, uh, chapter 20. But in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, it talks, about, it talks about the seed of the adversary and the seed of the woman. Now, we know that the woman doesn't carry the seed, it's the man. But the seed of the woman was Jesus Christ. That way back when, God knew that one day Jesus Christ would be here. And guess what? The adversary's head and heel shall be bruised. <laughs> Look in Revelation chapter 20 where it's fulfilled. Verse 10, it says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented, day and night, forever and what? Ever. Ever. God, he's on a collision course with misery and forever and ever. And that's where Genesis, you know, it's fulfilled there. And let's close in Revelation 21. And I leave you with this. In verse 1 it says, And I saw a new heaven, and I saw a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as the bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4, and it says, And God shall wipe away all tears. God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more what? Death. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. What a joy we have knowing Jesus Christ and knowing that he will return one day. And one day there's not going to be any more sorrow. There's not going to be any more tears. There won't be any more death. <coughs> Jesus Christ, the real superhero, our Savior, will be coming back. That's a fact. The Word of God says so. And one day we'll get to see our real superhero, our Savior, Jesus Christ, face to face.